Hi guys, it's Kelly and I am here with another video for Newton's Nook. Today I'm going to be using uh, Beautiful Wings. This is a new set from their March release and this is unfortunately my last post for them but I have so thoroughly enjoyed being a guest designer and um, I'm so thrilled that they would even have me. So I wanted to do some watercoloring with these beautiful intricate stamps. So I have some Canson watercolor paper here. I'm inking up my stamps with uh, Versamark after I use my embossing putty, and that's just a tool to get rid of any static. And then I'm going to heat emboss them in white. So I wish I could tell you what kind of white embossing powder this was, but I'm not going to lie. I don't know. I think I've mixed them together over the years, and I clearly need some more. So the next time I buy it, I will let you know <laughs> which kind I decide to go with. So anyway, I'm going to heat set them one at a time. This is not something that you necessarily have to do, but this is what works best for me. And also because I like to mask my images when I emboss them, when I'm building up something. So you can't put a mask over um, just the dry embossing powder. So I heat set that, waited for it to cool, put a mask over it, and then I'm just going to continue on with my stamping. Now for this particular card, that was the only time I did any masking is what you're seeing right here. Um, the other ones I just kind of stamped around, but I have done it in the past and I like the way that that looks. So I just use a dry uh, paintbrush to brush away any loose um, embossing powder that might be sticking where I don't want it before I go ahead and heat set it. And the embossing buddy really does a very good job, uh, but sometimes like there I was just in one little area and not realizing that. Um, I probably need to be more generous with it to stick it kind of all uh, or rub it kind of all over the place so the embossing powder doesn't stick to those other areas I don't want it to. I'm not going to show you my, me embossing this entire thing um, because it would probably be pretty boring. So we're just going to move right on. I have painted or um, taped this down just using some painter's tape to a cardboard piece um, to keep everything flat and I am being very liberal with my clean clear water because I'm going to be painting the entire thing. I picked out a couple of distress inks that I liked that are brighter colors that I thought would work really well together and I'm just kind of smearing those down on my Ranger craft mat so I can pick up what I need from them. And I used mustard seed, picked raspberry, carved pumpkin, twisted citron, and peacock feathers. So I'm just going to start dropping the color in and because the water's already on the paper, it's already wet, everything's going to start to bloom automatically. I try to, when I put my colors down, work in um, a visual triangle, so three different colors. And I'm putting this in the background, but I'm also putting it over the butterflies as well. Uh, I took a online card class, and I think um, Dawn's the one who leads it for uh, Dawn Wolfslagel. She's with W plus 9. She leads the class. Um, but she taught a technique, and I think she called it like negative painting. Um, hers was not with embossing, I don't think, um, but this I just felt worked really well for me. Uh, when you heat emboss something and then watercolor over it, those those raised edges help to keep your color in place. So I, if I'm going to be watercoloring something and I don't want it to be um, super loose, I want uh, some more formed edges, I prefer to emboss it. That's just me. You do whatever works for you. So once I have all of this down, and I kind of neglected the right hand side of my card just because I hadn't really done embossing, any embossing over there, but I also wasn't sure how big my panel was going to be. So then it occurs to me that I need to start bringing it out um, to the right hand side. So I go back in and, and get those um, colors, and in between each color I am rinsing my brush. I have two, um, you can see on the right hand side there, two uh things of water, ones for rinsing and ones for picking up clean clear water. So I'm using a brush, or I'm sorry, I'm using a dry rag, a brush, good god. I'm using a dry rag to kind of blot up any of the color from inside the butterflies that was pooling. I don't want them to be pooling. And then from here I'm going to go back in and start dropping in even more intense color, but I'm only going to do it to the background. So around the butterflies is where I want to concentrate the color, and this is going to help them to start to pop off the page. Um, my paper was pretty wet, so you want to make sure when you're picking up the color that your paintbrush is wet enough 
that you're actually going to deposit color because if you try to go in there with a dry brush what you're going to end up doing is instead of putting pigment down you're going to suck water up because it's too dry so just try to make sure that your um, moisture level on your brush is matching the moisture level on your paper so I had you saw just given it like one really good wash as I'm doing this I'm realizing that the edges are really starting to dry out so as I'm working in the center it's not so much of an issue but once I start moving out like with the um, the yellow and some of the pinks um, they weren't spreading as I wanted them to so this isn't a huge deal you can go back in and add more water like I did um, you'll see when we get to that point I just kind of uh, took my larger brush that I had done the flat wash with and just went back in and added water where I needed it to be for the color to bloom out now if you like a look or if you're going for a look of hard edges don't do that don't add more water because it will um, it will dry with hard edges if you don't blend it out with more water so if that's the look that you're going for then just kind of embrace that I think both of them are really pretty it's just not what I was going for for this particular card and I like intense color um, spring is right around the corner I am very anxious for it I love everything spring all the things for well, I shouldn't say everything spring because I don't really dig the thunderstorms because um, sometimes they're terrifying <laughs> um, but you can see here where I put that pink down how it wasn't blooming out so I'm just going to go in and add um, a little bit more water and then I'm adding it to anywhere where I feel like it's already starting to get dry and then I'm just going to keep you know picking up color and, and moving right along the um, with distress inks they have a couple of different yellows and mustard seed was the first yellow that came out and it's still my favorite because it's super intense it's a super intense like lemon yellow if I tried to use like the squeeze lemonade I don't think that I would get the same kind of effect and I'm just gonna keep adding the color because um, as you can see it's it's blooming out so it's not staying as intense so I'm just gonna keep adding it until I'm happy with the way that that background looks once I'm content with that then I'm gonna go ahead and heat dry it so you don't have to heat dry it you can let it dry naturally and that I don't know that the look would be all that different um, but I'm very impatient um, so I usually end up heat drying mine the only time that I don't is if I really think it's gonna have a huge effect on the way that my background looks so we're just building up that intensity um, and I am I cut those parts out but I'm adding more distressing to my Ranger craft mat as I need it so I know I had to re-ink um, the pink and the green up a couple of times um, where I had run out of that uh, and again not a big deal even though it's wet it doesn't you know take a huge it doesn't take anything off your ink pad or anything before I heat set it I wanted to add some shimmer so I'm using W plus 9 shimmer spray and I'm just putting down like one little um, squirt of it on my craft mat and then I'm just going to add that in various places um, it will blend out into those colors and then when it dries it gives a super pretty shimmer this isn't something that you need to do it's just something that I like to do because I like things that are um, shiny and shimmery um, glitter Ooh, I love me some glitter and then I went in with that same rag and just kind of dotted up any of the areas where um, the ink was pooling I found when heat drying something if you have areas that are super wet comparative to the ones that are really dry it really gives you some hard edges which again I think is very pretty but not what I was going for so just you know heat dried that all down this is as dry as it's gonna get and then I just took clean clear water and splashed it all over the background um, I let it sit for just a minute and then I blotted it up with a dry cloth and this is just to get a little bit more texture into the background I removed it from my board and I trimmed it down it ended up being <clears throat> three and three quarters by five and then I'm gonna go in um, with my Copics and add in a little bit of a shadow this is to help them look more 3d it's going to help set them apart from that background and again this is not required also if you're super comfortable with watercolors I could have done this with the watercolors 
I am not super comfortable with watercolors. So I just do it with my, after everything's dry, I go back in and do it with my Copics. Uh, the only thing that I will caution you is the Copics don't come, they don't over, wait, no, oversaturate, no. They don't really saturate the paper where that shimmer is. Um, they don't saturate as much, I should say. So I went in with the C5, and you want to be careful when you're doing something like this because they're alcohol-based markers, so they'll cover anything. It's like a Sharpie. Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously much better than a Sharpie, but it's the same concept. So if I just took this Copic and I didn't pay any attention to those white embossed lines, I could color them gray, which I don't want to do. So be very careful with um, how close you get to your embossing. Obviously you want it to be close enough that it looks like a legit shadow, but you don't want to color over it because you'll change the color of your butterfly. Here I did not put the darkest color underneath their antennas because they would not cast that much of a shadow. So I went in with my medium and added that in and then I'm going to blend the whole thing out with the C1. And you can see just how much it helps that white um, pop off the page. And they all have a little bit of color because we did the initial wash, um, just not nearly as intense as the outside of it is. When I was stamping my butterflies down, I didn't really leave myself anywhere to put a sentiment. So I'm going to add it on a piece of vellum. This is, um, it says, what does it say? Just fluttering by to say, and then you finish the sentiment on the inside, which I think is really cute. I think a lot of times as card makers, we forget about the inside of a card. So when you're stamping on anything that's slick, vellum, acetate, anything like that, you want to go straight down, straight back up. That's the easiest way to get it without smearing. So that's what I did. And then I'm going to put adhesive on the back and just wrap it around. Um, so that way you won't see any adhesive underneath that vellum on the card front. One of the ways with watercolor, you know, you try to do as much as you can to make sure it doesn't warp, but sometimes it does, and mine did. So one of the ways that you can help flatten that piece out is by using um, this, the fun foam, the big foam sheets. It will help it to lay better. So I just picked out some yellow. I thought that would be pretty to see from the side, and it would match well, and I'm mounting that on a white card base. So it's got a nice white border around it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of the card. So the front says just fluttering by to say, and then on the inside it will say you are simply wonderful. So just to like a little pick me up to send these to, you know, some friends. And then I'm going to, I have some Simon Says Stamps uh, mini ink pads here, and I'm going to pick out a couple to stamp my butterflies in. Now these are really intense colors, and I think that they are beautiful as is, but I wanted something a little softer for the inside of the card, so I ended up using second generation stamping to stamp the butterflies, and I, my work surface is just not large enough, so it ended up having to be like kind of canted to the side so you could see it. And I, um, what did I use? I used Teeny Bikini, I used, um, I can't remember them. I'll put them in the description. I will, I will link them in the description, because I cannot remember the name of them. I think this is something duckling. Sorry. I sh probably should have looked that up, but as you know this about my videos by now, I don't always do that. So I wanted to add some sequins to the front because you have heard my professed love for everything that glitters, shimmers. Um, these are clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. I thought that they would be a nice way to kind of set off that sentiment and um, make it look like it wasn't just floating by itself in midair. So I added those, just the clear sequins. Everything was kept pretty simple. I love the way that those butterflies pop off the background. Uh, and that's the whole card. So thank you so much for joining me, and thank you to Newton's Duck for having me as their guest designer. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.